Hello, welcome to Avebury, a little village in Wiltshire and our stop for the day. It's actually famous for its henge. What's a henge? Yeah, what's a henge? It's a Neolithic sort of circular ditch embankment complex sometimes with stone circles the most famous obviously Stonehenge which is not far away from here but this is one of the largest it actually circles the village so we're gonna go on a, a little tour I wonder we may bump into some new age people because they tend to hang around in places like this but anyway let's go and have a look impression of what Avebury could have looked like four and a half thousand years ago when it was originally started. We never know whether it was quite completed. It's the largest stone circle in Europe. It's around about a mile in circumference, 350 yards across. It has four entrances, which is unusual. Most of them have two. And there are stone circles right throughout England. They tend to be rectangles in Europe, but they were very popular for around about, well, not ex we don't know exactly, but down to about three and a half thousand years ago. Then the reason or purpose for them disappeared and it was overtaken by something else. So they, they disappeared from the record, shall we say, three and a half thousand years ago and didn't come back into being until around about a thousand years ago. And the first mention we have at Avebury is in fact in the, um, the Doomsday Book. Back in 2003, they established that that stone was about 5,000 years old. It had been in that position for 5,000 years, give or take a couple of years on either side for, for accuracy. When we have a stone which has been used by Neolithic people to sharpen and polish their axes and their flints, we call them polissoir stones, right? So this is a polissoir stone. This is an example up in the five fields, which I told you about. This, this stone is still there today. These grooves here are where they shape their axes and stone axes. So this polissoir stone, 5,000 years ago, was in regular use by Neolithic man. Well, that was Avebury on a chilly January day. That was pretty good, wasn't it, Mel? Yep, it was. That was a yes from Mel. The tour was three pounds, so it was really reasonable. And it lasts just over an hour. So it's definitely worth doing the tour to get some explanation and put some of these stones in context. And Patrick, the National Trust volunteer, was very informative. Yeah, Patrick, the volunteer, was very informative. Are you getting any energies from the stone? <laughs> uh, I'm not. There's a few new ages I saw hugging them. So, um, <laughs> it'd be funny if they're hugging it and it just fell over. <laughs> yeah, anyway, that was Avebury. Definitely worth a visit. Mel's complaining because <laughs> the back's hurt. The camera's not that heavy. It is at this anyway, angle, I'm holding it. That's Avebury in Wiltshire. Thumbs up for us. We've been told there's a big white horse around here somewhere. I don't know, I've been looking for ages. It's behind you. It's behind you. <laughs> There's actually somebody on it. There's actually somebody on it at the moment. Oh. Walking across his eye. So anyway, that's it. White horse done. Let's move on.
So that's where we stayed last night. That's the Bath Arms Hotel. And it's really close to Longleat Safari Park. So I'm keeping one eye open for any escaped lions or anything like that. Anyway, it was good, good food. So that's the end of a little Wiltshire Plains jaunt, tracing in the footsteps of our ancient ancestors. But unlike those, I haven't got a massive blue stone to carry on rollers. <laughs> we came by car. <laughs> well, this place is quite good location, as well as being close to Longleat Safari Park. It's really close to Bath, and not that far from Salisbury either, so uh, a good base. So it's now time for us to head home to Wales. Uh, about two hours from Cardiff, so goodbye.